Hello, I'm Evan, the Education Program Leader for the National Music Center, coming at you today from the dark garden of musical mischief. In this video, we are going to look at an instrument that you know quite well. You've already put in your 10,000 hours, you've experimented, you've tried things, you've failed. I'm talking about your voice. So we're going to use the National Music Center's Instrument Exploration Toolkit to look at how this thing works. We're going to look at how our bodies put together to give us a voice. We're going to look at what part of it vibrates. We're going to think about how we can control the vibration. We're going to spend a lot of time talking about timbre. Our voice as an instrument has better timbral control than almost any other instrument out there. And lastly, we'll think about how we can make music with our voice, although, again, I'm sure you've already tried this many times with lots of success. Perhaps a couple of what you'd consider failures. Don't sweat it. There are no sour notes here. So let's take a look. So we are going to use the Instrument Exploration Toolkit today, but we might be a bit loose with the order. There are parts of your voice that you know so well, like volume control. You all know how to do it. Loop. Quiet. Also, you probably already know how to make a high pitch sound and a low pitch sound. You've used your voice a lot. Also, we're going to look at how the voice is designed and how we make a vibration at the same time. So let's get an obvious question out of the way. Is our voice struck, pluck, air, or electric? It's not struck, it's not plucked, it's not electric, although one could argue that our body does need electronic energy to move our muscle and all that, but the part that is energizing the vibration is the air that is coming out of our lungs. Our lungs are like a fleshy balloon. Unlike this balloon that needs to be blown up by me, our lungs are powered by a diaphragm. It's a muscle that can inflate or deflate our lungs automatically. I'm going to blow up these lungs for a second. So now this balloon is filled with air and because it's stretched out the walls of the balloon, it has all this potential energy built up in it. And the only place for the air to escape is this little hole. So if I let it go, the energy disperses. So our lungs are the source of energy for our voice and they are connected to a tube called the trachea. It is your air hole that connects to your voice box. This holds your vocal folds or vocal cords. I always found the term vocal cords confusing growing up. I pictured these two little fleshy strings, but it's actually these two flaps of skin that are held by another muscle that can lift it up to breathe. And then they come together so that these two fleshy bits just slap together, riding the energy of the air. I can recreate that fairly well by bringing the edges of this balloon together as I let the air out. The voice mechanism is kind of hard to describe, but uh, you can look at it. They put a camera up the nose and down the back of the throat, and it shows video of your vocal folds moving. It's stunning. If you don't like the inside of the body, don't look, but I highly recommend it. I'll post a link. So we found the energy for the vibration. It comes from our lungs. The vibration itself is created in our throat. It is the vocal folds. You can feel the vibration right here. If you put your fingers here and go, ah, quite vibrating. And then, of course, there is our head. I'm going to say something a little strange. If you could take off your head and put it over here and survive, if that was OK, your vocal cords would actually sound a lot like this. That's a mess of sound waves. Our head is made up of these different chambers, and we can change the shape of it. This allows us to control sound waves in an incredible way. But let's take a moment to talk a little bit more about sound waves. When any object vibrates, it transfers the energy of its motion into whatever's around it. We call this transfer of energy a wave. Vibrations create waves in solids, liquids, and gases. Usually we hear sound waves in the air. Sound waves actually move quite a bit faster than this. A sound wave zips through the air about 350 meters per second. There are three things we can measure about the sound wave its hertz, its decibels, and its waveform. Hertz is related to the pitch. You can think of it as how many of these waves are hitting your ear every second. Slower vibrations, less waves hit your ear every second. Faster vibrations, more waves hit your ear. If there are between 20 and 20,000 waves hitting your ear every second, you will hear this as sound. Anything less, nothing. Anything more, nothing. In fact, I can't even hear 20,000 hertz anymore. I'm too old. 
decibels is really how much pressure is in the wave. If I move this a little tiny bit, it's going to make little tiny waves and the pressure on this side is going to be very small. If I move it a lot, more pressure, more energy. We experience this as volume. Now when we talk about waveform, let's notice something else, which is when this wave hits this solid end, it bounces back. This is an echo. So I want you to imagine all of these waves zipping around inside of your mouth, echoing about. Sometimes these waves bounce into each other and they cancel each other out. Sometimes these waves bounce into each other and they make each other stronger. The shape of the object will help boost certain parts of the sound wave, and this is called resonance. So the sound waves are created right in our throat and then they bounce around in our head, and this creates all sorts of different timbres. There is a very special sound visualizer which can help us see the sound wave. This device here is called a spectrogram. It's one of my favorite sound visualization tools. From the bottom to the top, we see our hertz measured out. We have 20 hertz down here. We have 20,000 hertz up here. This shows us the whole spectrum of human hearing. Hertz is a measurement of frequency. Uh, there's a lot of words surrounding this, but frequency is pitch and it's measured in hertz. Low pitch is down here, high pitch is up here. The spectrogram also gives us information about the volume. We have a little color meter down here. Soft sounds appear really dark and black, then it gets blue and green, and then finally yellow and then red for the loudest volume. So it's quite clear most of my sounds are making a mess of color on the screen. So unlike my speech, you can see the whistle is a very clear line up and down. A whistle is a very pure wave, very little ripples in between. Ah. So unlike the whistle, when I use my whole voice, I get all these lines, and these are sound waves within sound waves, uh, or overtones. Like I've been saying, I can use my head to shape these extra lines, these extra ripples, these overtones. Let's try the vowel sounds. A -E -A -O -U. Each of the vowel sounds has a very distinct sound print. You can see which of the sound waves are being boosted and which ones are taken out. We talk about timbre in terms of brightness. Lots of lines stacked up is a brighter sound, whereas fewer lines, we say the timbre is dark. The darkest timbre we can get is the oo sound. And this sort of makes sense. We're making a very small hole and our cheeks are absorbing a lot of the extra sound waves. Whereas when we go, ah, our mouth is wide open and that very bright source of vibration is letting out a lot of those little ripples. Remember our friend, the duck call? That's a mess of sound waves. The vibration can come from the outside too and my mouth can still shape the sound into words. I can also use the air to make very bright timbres. In fact, this is what we would call noise. You can see the spectrogram has a hard time locking onto a single pitch, so it is just showing this cloud. With this vocal machine, we can make all sorts of bizarre sounds. So how do you make music with your voice? Well, really, you just want to be able to control everything that we've been looking at. You control the pitch, you control the volume, and you control your timbre. Everything else, it's kind of up to you. But you can learn a lot more about your voice using spectrograms and other tools that we've looked at today. So use your voice. Explore the timbral majesty that it can create. Try singing. It doesn't have to sound beautiful. It can always sound interesting. While you talk and sing, think about the mechanism at work. <coughs> Try using your voice with a spectrogram and imagine the sound waves zipping through the air. I'll put a link to the online spectrogram that we use today. So have fun and remember, happy exploring. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and or subscribe. Also, the National Music Center is a charity that relies on donations, so if you have the means and you feel like it, please go to studiobell.ca slash donate.